humans and higher primates have even number of fatty acid chain. However, odd number of carbons are present in fatty acids present in plants and marine organisms. Now, other than that, especially in case of ruminants, which have a large rumen, in that case, fermentation of carbohydrates forms a huge number of 3-carbon propenoate or propenoic acid in this process. Now, today's topic is to understand how odd chain uh, or like odd number of carbon chain fatty acids are oxidized. We have already looked at how beta oxidation takes place for even car carbon chain fatty acids. Now we look at how odd carbon chain fatty acids can be oxidized. Is the process similar? Were there specific enzyme? We are going to look at all of these things in this video. So stay tuned till the end. It's a short video. So this is 115 carbon or chain fatty acid. Now, first of all, it would be degraded or it would be oxidized by simple beta oxidation of fatty acid process. Six cycle of beta oxidation would ultimately allow release of 6-NADH, 6-FADH2 as well as 6 Acetyl CoA because each cycle one acetyl CoA, one NADH, and one FADH2 leaves. Ultimately, the carbon number is reduced to 12 from 15, right? And what we are left with is a 3 carbon compound which is known as propenoyl CoA, a 3 carbon coenzyme A linked moiety. Now, the problem is the conventional enzymes how they can degrade propenoyl CoA. That's an important aspect. Now, this particular problem is circumvented in the following way. Propenoyl CoA gets converted to D-methylmanoline CoA by the enzyme propenoyl CoA carboxylase. It's a step-up reaction. So, from a 3-carbon, a 4-carbon intermediate is formed. Now, with a epimerase reaction, it would form a L-methylmanonyl CoA. Now, it's just an isomer that is formed because L forms are better recognized by the body's enzyme. Now, from L-methylmanonyl CoA, ultimately succinyl CoA is produced. Succinyl CoA is 4-carbon, as you can see, whereas propenyl CoA was 3-carbon. So, our problem was at the end state, if it's a 3-carbon, then it's very difficult to cleave it and release the acetyl CoA. So the general solution is perform a step up reaction, which is performed by these epimerase and carboxylase enzymes, and then break it down equally to two molecules of acetyl CoA. That's one of the way. And the other way is succinyl CoA can be directly channeled into that Krebs cycle. And that is how it can be used to generate ATP. So this is the overview of fatty acid oxidation in terms of odd-gen fatty acid. Point to be remembered, now the goal of fatty acid oxidation is to produce raw material that can be used or that can be channeled in Krebs cycle and ultimate goal is to generate ATP. In this situation, the succinyl CoA, the intermediate, even if it is not converted to acetyl CoA, it can be directly channeled into the TCA cycle and can be utilized to generate ATP. So the ultimate goal is same. The pathway by which we are achieving these goals might be a bit different, but overall origin number of or origin carbon number fatty acid and even chain fatty acids are oxidized in similar way. But the key difference is at the last step where the propenyl CoA is converted to succinyl CoA first and then it is either channeled into TCA cycle or broken down into two molecules of acetyl CoA. So this is all about odd gen number of fatty acid oxidation. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is a very simple and very easy video. So if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.